All right, we're continuing with discussions in African Black psychology on African personality and assessment. In this section, we're looking at African-centered models of African personality assessment. Now, if you all remember my psychological lineage, my African Black psychology lineage, you will understand why this particular mini lecture is exciting for me because it introduces, I think, the work of my great Jagna, the dynamic Kobe Kalanji Kazimbe Kambon. Baba Kobe is, uh, you know, my great Jagna, you know, my uh, teacher, and he takes, took a position of analyzing African personality. And I do not have his book with me. <laughs> Oops. But in his work, he challenged the Eurocentric models of personality assessment of African people to move to an African-centered analysis of personality, moving out of a pejorative uh, deficit model of personality and talked about understanding the African personality from the African worldview perspective. So Kambon argued that um, at the core of who African people are is spiritual. He takes a position that the dynamic African spirituality of communalism, collectivism merges or unites into this holistic synthesis that drives the energy of the African personality. So remember our uh, elder, esteemed elder, Naim Akbar, Wade Nobles, and our ancestor, Robert Williams. I hope he's an ancestor, not black. All said that the African, yeah, he is, I remember, okay that the African personality is connected, collective, and spiritual. So Kambon argues that it is a biogenetic, innate, and deeply rooted in African psyche, that at the core of who we are are spiritual people. And he will describe how he classifies it, but this is very important in terms of understanding who African people are. So Kambon sees the basic striving in the African personality as being toward the affirmation of the African survival thrust. We defined African survival thrust earlier, but the African survival thrust emphasizes the survival maintenance of African people, meaning that our African personality is rooted in how do we emphasize the survival of African folks, the African survival thrust. So in his model, he posits or specifies that there's an overriding or overarching goal of African personality, which is the vigorous expression of African self-consciousness that affirms pan-African cultural nationalism. That that is the innate, the natural position of the African. So naturally, we're going to strive to survive. Naturally, in order to survive, we should be expressing some level of African self-consciousness. He proposes, very importantly, that when African children are nurtured and socialized in African-centered environments or African-centered social learning and developmental spaces, it supports the development of a strong ASC, which is African self-consciousness or healthy African self-consciousness. And that is the ideal position for the development of African children because the overriding Nature of the African is a vigorous expression of African self-consciousness and African nationalism. So we are, are overriding, and this is very important, he is saying that we do not seek to be oppressed. We do not seek to accept oppression. We actually seek to affirm our African cultural identity in the development of our personality. And any substantive deviation from that reflects a cultural misorientation. Very important. He argues that when you are nurtured or... Uh, Exposed to Eurocentric environments, it develops a weak or a faulty African personality development or a weak African self-consciousness that leads to development of cultural misorientation. Now, I'm going to come for some of y'all next. It's not the first time. You'll be all right. But when we think about this idea of a faulty African personality development and the development of cultural misorientation, we're talking about those Black folks who decide that bleaching their skin is more beautiful 
than the beautiful brown chocolate skin that they caramel, vanilla, dark chocolate skin that the creator Odumanko Ma Olodumare gave. That it is better to contour the nose because that's cultural misorientation when you think of contouring the nose. So we're gonna break it down, not gonna deviate too soon. But again, remember this chart where we looked at these pathways of development. And it argues again that when we develop in African-centered spaces, a strong African self-consciousness is developed. When you develop in Eurocentric-centered environments or European-centered environments, you develop a weak African self-consciousness or cultural misorientation. I'm gonna make it make sense in a minute, one moment. So African people have over time been exposed to this challenges of our personality and the appropriate development of our personality because we have Eurocentric concepts, European ideology that insert into the African consciousness and African psyche. Cambon argues that although it impacts our psyche, at the core of who we are, a very strong African self-consciousness. And that we are at the core of who we are, a spiritual people. That's the African self-extension orientation. So our personality then develops, our personality traits develop out of who we are, spiritual collective people. So in Kanban's theory, he argues for this vigorous expression of African self-consciousness. And he says that it represents the conscious expression of African spirituality. Okay, I had to pause there for a minute because some of y'all run from African spirituality. He argues that the goal of African personality development functioning is a vigorous expression of African self-consciousness. We said that before and that African-centered values help to reinforce a strong and healthy African self-consciousness. So the part that you have to challenge yourself about is what does it mean to develop a strong African self-consciousness inside the expression of African spirituality and collectivism? So in Kampan's theory, he recognizes or talks about the African identity that one should be able to, in the development of a strong African self-consciousness, have an awareness or an awareness, awareness or recognition of one's collective African identity and cultural heritage, meaning you should know who you are, but most importantly, that you are not an individual, that you are a part of a group. He discusses the general ideological and activity priorities placed on African survival, liberation, and proactive affirmative development. The African people should emphasize an African survival thrust. Uh-oh, we already said that. And that the specific priorities placed on collective self-knowledge and self-affirmation should reflect Afrocentric values, Afrocentric customs, and institution building. Meaning that when we affirm who we are, then we develop institutions that support an African survival thrust. In order to do that, you have to be okay with being African. And then you will do African things, and then you will support what it means to be African and support African people. Fourth, we should develop a posture of resolute resistance and defense against anything anti-African or anti-Black. Anything that force, any forces that threaten African survival in general. He argues that this African, the strong African self-consciousness reflects a strength, a psychological strength. And he identifies that before we get to that African self-consciousness, we have to understand the African self-extension orientation, which is a deeply rooted, unconscious, genetically based African spirituality, reflecting a continual, unending urge of striving for collective communal expression of the African cosmic spiritual wholeness or unity. So again, I want you to shake off that fear African spirituality and then connect to this concept of spirit that African people are spiritual people. And even though both and and we express our spirituality in very rhythmic and interconnected ways. And sometimes even if we are in a Christian church, it reflects a specific Africanity. So he says that we should have, understand that we're spiritual people at the core, and that helps to build a strong psychological foundation. So he created an assessment just like um, Robert Williams, and his assessment is a 42-item questionnaire designed to assess 
levels of African self-consciousness later on. Baba Kobe would create a cultural misorientation scale to assess how far African people who took the test deviated from their sense of Africanness. So the African self-consciousness scale helps to assess um, your racial identity and how close and clear you are about who you are as an African person. All right, so this concludes our mini lecture on the great Kobe Kambon. And we'll meet you again in the same space when we are introducing uh, concepts that address what is normal, natural functioning for African people. So remember in this course, we really tried to take and break down the experiences of African people. We then broke down Eurocentric psychology over history. Then we broke down Eurocentric psychology to understand how it has impacted the consciousness of African people. And now we're building up African black psychology and understanding the concepts as it relates to psychology and how we understand best the African mind and what is best for African people, which helps us to then get to what optimal mental health is. If you don't know what the disorder is, the real disorder, then you don't know how to treat the issue or the challenge. So many of these theorists, Azebo, Nobles, Akbar, all argue that our issue as African people is that we don't know who we are. So connecting to our African self-consciousness will help to build our understanding of who we are. So we'll continue this in the next unit. I'm Dr. Slater Sarah. Peace, baboos.